What brought me to the medicine? Hmm. I think I was finally ready for for a, a, a deep healing. I wanted to discover something about myself that was hidden from myself. I felt like I wasn't living as authentically as I could. I, I, I wanted to, to, to reach my potential. And in order to do that, I had to discover what those fears were, the deep-seated fears that were holding me back. And I'd heard about this medicine. Uh, Charlotte told me about the medicine. I read a little bit about it, and I just decided that it was it was the right time for me to take the plunge and really make the discovery of, of myself. Hey. I, see. I think hey. my soul brought me to the medicine, like knowing that it was it was time to really solidify the lessons that I had been doubting for some time and really feel them as truth. Yeah, I, I, I was also ready to, to really solidify some of that, that knowing as truth and to not doubt it anymore mm, and not doubt myself and to not doubt the path and, and what my ancestors are leading me towards. Mm. Bassi. <laughs> Intentions. I really, I knew that there was something out there for me. I wasn't sure what it was or exactly how to find it, but I had faith that this medicine could help me find it. And uh, I didn't really have any expectations of what it was going to look like or how it was going to be delivered to me. But I, I knew that this, this medicine was, was a powerful medicine and that this would, this would move me along my path. Mm -hmm. My intentions were to release judgment for myself and and the lesson that came through was that that comes through a lot of um, as a protection mechanism for fear of making mistakes fear of humiliation and so starting to release that to come into my center so that I know that the choices that I'm making for my life are the aligned choices and I was reflecting this morning on that first ceremony, the first purge came when Chor was talking in the fire circle about the men sitting around and making the sacred torches. And I had this thought of like, I'm sure they don't sit there making those with judgment or with fear of mistakes or with fear of um, doing something wrong. They just trust that process. And I was like simultaneously filled with this joy that that would be possible to live that way, to live in like that judgment-free way. And then a sadness that I hadn't been doing that and then I purged, um, mm. which I think was a really significant moment that I need to continue reflecting on. Mm. 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 I spent so long, so many years of my life not being <laughs> integrated with my soul. Mm -hmm. mm. I was talking to Chor and I was saying it's kind of like I was holding hands with my soul. Mm -hmm. We were walking along the same path, but we weren't integrated. We, we, mm -hmm. we should be one. Mm -hmm. mm. And that makes it very difficult to really live passionately and authentically. It's mm -hmm. a constant attempting to intellectualize everything when the way it should be is it should be natural. It, it, it should, you should know where your joy is. Easily access that joy because 
you know what's best for you. Mm-hmm. And, and during the guided meditation, Truth introduced me to my soul and said, walk up and give him a hug. <laughs> and I gave him a hug and now pull him into you. Mm. And I feel so much different now mm. after that one little moment. Um, I feel much lighter. I'm not dragging this soul around with me. <laughs> We're going together. And the soul isn't dragging your body around with you. Yeah, that, that's a better way. And like Charlotte said, there was a little bit of sadness that I, quote unquote, wasted so many years not being integrated with the soul. But then to realize that I have so, so much time to, to do better is a, is a beautiful thing. And the other thing that I will definitely take away is that my fear of death was holding me back from actually living fully. Mm. This fear of death that I pushed down and covered up was holding me back from my highest potential. It was keeping me so conservative in my actions. Mm. And, mm. and I think I, with some sadness, I think I'm, if, if it had not been for this trip here to Soul Centro and discovering Iboga, I might have lived the rest of my life like that. And uh, when I think about that, it just makes me want to cry. I just, uh, I'm so, I'm so grateful. And uh, that continues, that, that gratitude continues to grow. So thank you. A lot of the messaging that I got in my first journey was about the need to really strengthen the vessel. Uh, that carries the soul and especially like strengthening my core as my you know uh, the physical representation of staying in my center Mm. so I think just loving on myself a little bit more with more sustained discipline Mm. and um, pushing through pain and discomfort not pushing it away but moving through it Mm, and and to to think less and just do more. I know I know my path. I know what I need to be doing in this life and in this world and for myself and for my community and to just strengthen myself so that I can continue doing that. Mm. More soul work and more artwork. Mm. Mm-hmm. Soul work and artwork, I like mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. 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 This medicine would have, this medicine journey would have been a powerful experience had I come by myself. But the fact that Charlotte and I came together as husband and wife and did it together just amplifies the experience because you can't really be, uh, I'll speak for myself, I can't really be the best husband that I could be. <laughs> The, the joy, the lightness that I have in my body, in my spirit right now, is going to allow me to show up so much better in the relationship that I have with Charlotte. Mm-hmm. Letting go of that fear and has, has made me feel lighter in my body and in my spirit. And that's going to allow me to show up better in the relationship I have with Charlotte. And. Uh, Hopefully, in the relationship that I, we will have with our children, mm. that's, that's really that's my dream. I, I, I wanted to I wanted to heal myself uh, and heal my my family and personal trauma so that I don't pass that on to my children. And I feel like I've done that mm-hmm. with the medicine, and I'm so grateful for that. Mm-hmm. I think the other big thing that this week taught me that was coming up before we got here was a need to have more tolerance for sitting with what is. And that I frequently want to like move quickly through uncomfortable feelings or or numb them or Mm. overstimulate them. Um, And that that also impacted how I interacted with Javon and his feelings and this like needing things to move faster 
than they need to. Um, and so I'm looking forward to having greater tolerance for sitting through those moments in life that are challenging and um, not being so concerned with what is happening for everyone else around me, but like bringing it back to myself mm -hmm. and having greater patience. And that will impact how I interact with you and certainly with <laughs> with children that move at their own pace. <laughs> Not at our pace. Um, yeah. I mean, the we'll start with the food. But if the food was excellent, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. lots of delicious vegetarian and vegan options, um, very healthy but very filling. Mm -hmm. um, had a, uh, some chicken and fish, but uh, yeah, there, there were some chicken and fish and shrimp options. So for the meat eaters, there would be something here for you as well. To focus on eating more vegetables and so forth, um, and just eating healthier and lighter. And uh, this was a great opportunity to learn some new, uh, some new recipes. Chef was uh, willing to share some some recipes with me, so I have uh, have that to take home as well. Um, as far as the hospitality is concerned, the, the hosts here are mm -hmm. fantastic. Anything that you need, if they can get it for you, they will. Uh, even if you need to wake them up in the middle of the night to, to get it, you know, they said, please do not hesitate to let us know. And they mean it. Um, immediately post ceremony, you're not in a physical place to do. You're really not in a place where you can do very much for yourself and you're kind of vulnerable and mm -hmm. I never felt alone or abandoned during that time. Uh, there was always someone, you know, every 20 minutes or so peeking their head <laughs> in the door. Are you okay? Do you need anything? Bringing you water or fruit, uh, even if you weren't quite ready to eat it yet. Uh, it was there for you and I felt very safe and very held. This was an excellent container for this experience. Uh, and I believe it's only going to get better. Uh, this, th this is, uh, the facility is a work in progress. So mm -hmm. um, I can't, uh, I can only imagine what it's going to look like six months or a year from now once, once uh, the folks here have had a chance to build it up. So I'm, I'm excited for the future guests to come here and experience it in an even greater form. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you said all the things, and I would just reiterate that the, the team here is really, yeah, really strong and connected to tradition, and um, and I think that made a big, that definitely made the decision to come here much easier, to know that it would be, you know, done in the ways of the Buiti, and, and informed by elders mm. that's super important to me so mm -hmm. yeah i'm really grateful for that